I went to Golds one day. Mike was out the front, just standing in the car park. <laughs> Lee, come here. Look. Come here. I'm like, I'm like, what is it, Mike? He goes, I finally figured it out. You know, Arthur Jones? I said, yeah, the invented Nautilus. He's God. He, he's God. I've worked it out. <laughs> you know that song, How Great Thou Art? That's about Arthur Jones. <laughs> I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to the Dave Palumbo Podcast, Episode 1. And the reason, I'll tell you in a minute, the reason we're changing <laughs> the show, we're joined the sport by Greg Valentino, special guest today, Lee Priest, and uh, there's John Romano just joining us as well. What's up, guys? John Romano. What's up? Now, the, the before John... everyone gets upset, I know you yeah. all just had Christmas. I know baby Jesus was just born and everyone's happy. Well, here in Australia, we don't give a shit. We took him with the umbilical cord, put him on the cross, and I'm eating Easter hot cross buns today uh, because nice. the very next day we crucified him. Now, hot cross buns has got the bunny on the packet. Happy Easter, everybody. What you know, I always wonder, what is in a hot cross bun, actually? <clears throat> well, it's like a fruit bun, very soft and nice, and you cover it with butter because that uh, really gives it the, the saturated fat that's good for your system. It has, like, raisins and raisins and fruit it's almost like a fruit bun but they yeah. put the cross on it for easter ah. so while you're having your christmas we've already strung him up but don't get upset people in a couple of days he's going to push that stone away and he'll be back so how then come how come your easter is all, so much earlier than the rest of the world well it's not it's in april but they just start putting <laughs> their easter eggs they put the Easter eggs and this out now because they worked out two years ago by putting these out early. They made like thirty million dollars extra because wow. people started buying them. People wow. complained about them, but they still crazy. brought them to Coles. And I never knew what they were. There's that kid song that drives me crazy. It plays in my head every night. Hot cross buns. Was that one of penny, two of penny hot cross buns? So those raisins are the essential sugars, right? So you got the essential yes, fat, yes. right? You get the essential and, and got, fat, and that's it, sort of like a brown flour. So it's not white flour. So there you go. Good. So the, it's the, inclusionary. Uh, it's it's and this, and this butter is the omega three cholesterol lowering <laughs> butter. So you can put more. Oh, on that's it. the trans. That's the trans fats probably uh, that they got in there. You know, now, <laughs> now now we're just some of the most heinous. And how could I go wrong with foods. Jesus? Jesus approval of the cross on it. You can't go wrong. Yeah, but Mr. No. Potts Cookies is going to make one of them now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be an isolized yeah. uh, fruit. <laughs> No, 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 on him. You put the cross upside down. <laughs> no, Lee, that's un-American. It'll get the cross inside the bun somehow. That's 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 the. Uh, so when you eat, yeah. when you open it up, you see it right there. You know. But the the bun would be like the stone, and when you roll it open, there will be baby Jesus and the cross inside, like no. in the cave. The cross would actually have, like be wooden on there. He'll take a little real wooden cross. We cook it in. <laughs> someone very... would choke. Someone would choke on it. <laughs> you, you, Chris, I think Chris Asito sent me this joke. It was like a, but I told by a comedian, and it's probably been around for years. And it's like um, this guy and his wife and his mother uh, mother in law are in uh, in Israel or something like that, the, you know, the Holy Land, uh, and the mother dies. The mother in law dies, and they're like, "You got two options." Option one is we can bury her here for $150. Option two is it's fi for $5,000, we'll ship her back to the United States. Right. And she can get buried there. And he's like, I'll take option one. I mean, I'll take option two. Let's send her back, pack her up. He, they're like, why would you do that? It's 150 bucks. You, she gets buried in the Holy Land here. He's like, 2,000 years ago, they, they buried another guy. And three days later, he came back to life. I can't <laughs> 
I got a joke. Stay I got a, dead. I got a, I got a, I got a Chris Casino. I'll tell you. Here we go. We got demonetized already. Thanks, yeah. Dave, for that religious joke. I, I even changed the name of the show to see if we wouldn't get demonetized. But... Well, it is a joke. You're right. It's the end of the year. It's the holiday season. Yes, yes. Big school dance on. The girl's like, i got to go talk to my father, see if I can go. Dad, Dad, can I go to the dance? No, you're not going. Oh, she goes back upstairs. She's on the phone. I can't go. Go ask him again. Goes downstairs. Dad, I really need to go or do anything. He's like, anything? Well, why don't you suck my pee-pee? She's like, what? You're my father. That's disgusting. She goes back upstairs. She's telling the friends I can't go. I'll give it one more shot. I go down. Dad, come on, please, please. I got to go. I told you what you got to do. She's like, okay, I'll do it. So she's down there. Ah, uh, oh, oh, she goes, that tastes like shit. She goes, yeah, I know. You probably wanted to borrow the car. Ah, uh, <laughs> I heard. <laughs> Lee, uh, very poor taste that is. <laughs> oh, oh your, your, but yours about the Holy Land was in good. Mine taste. was clean at least. It was just uh, it was a mother in law. To the religious people, Dave, that was sacrilegious. You're, you're doomed. <laughs> you were not joke the best religion. You know, I want to actually talk about. Well, let, first of all, I sent you guys that little that little link to TMZ yeah. where Nikki Haley, one of the uh, Republican candidates mm -hmm. uh, for running for president, was asked about um, you know She's what. A rhino. What she they said, what do you think is the the main cause of the civil war? Someone asked her. And she mentioned everything <laughs> except for slavery. Well, well, she, well, like, well, everything well, except yeah. the reason for why it started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't well, think, I think she knew. Well, I think that what I said in a roundabout way she did, because she said it was about giving everybody equal rights and equal this and no, equal that stuff. No, she just didn't no, say that. She didn't know. Like, she really didn't no, know. No, no. That's not what she did. Well, she well, did what every what politician does. She turns on the word salad switch when they don't know the answer to a question. Now, right. what she should have done yeah. was said, look, I, I, you caught me off guard. I can tell you how the Iraq war started, the war in Lebanon, <laughs> the war in Tunisia, the war in Afghanistan, the Vietnam War. World, I get to World War I, World War II. I can tell you all of those right off the top of my head. Civil War, it escapes me at the moment. I can go back and look it up. <laughs> for it escapes you. Right, if, if, if someone running for president doesn't know that the... the, the, the and you're not American. The, the Civil War is because of slavery. But that, but I see, don't think you should be running for president. How many that's people go to Civil War? Point. That's my point. Yeah. It's human. It's human yeah. to make a mistake and forget something. Okay? Right. You don't forget. So what they want, to, they want to show you they're not human. You know? Yeah. So yeah. why can't you just say, hey, I, I, I don't remember Instead of winding up, because then she was even dumb. dumb. She was even dumb. 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 She was even dumb. Absolutely dumb. nothing. So, you so can't be dumb. You can't be dumb and dumb. You know Trump's going to get a hold of this one. And, and listen, and, yeah. first of all, she, if she it, the Civil War was basically because of ta it started because of taxes. What happened was the fucking South didn't want you know was had free labor, which was slavery. Oh, then blacks and, never and pay they, their taxes. They didn't want to pay taxes slavery. and shit. And they're like, fuck that. Well, you know, we got the slaves working and stuff. And then, you know, that it started with all that shit. The argument started with that. And they said, oh, by the way, those people need to be paid and they need to be free. That's how all that shit started. I'll tell, tell you how it really started. There's a big party going on at the White House. Lincoln's just throwing them back, throwing them back. And he, he said, gets, I did what? He gets pissed. Uh, yeah, he woke up the next day and goes, I freed the what? <laughs> <laughs> No. no, he she she here she's trying to make a make up for it. She's like, uh, uh, she said Thursday the civil war was caused by a fight over slavery as she tried to tamp down the political uproar hours after she failed to mention it when she was asked about the conflict's origins. Of course, the civil war is about slavery. We know that. That's yes. the key part of it. She said on Pulse New Hampshire radio show. I'm from That's the south. Of course, you know it's about slavery. I'm <laughs> surprised she didn't say General Costco was involved. <laughs> that, that, that even that even makes my point even stronger. Well, she's, uh, she says, of course I know how it started. I'm from the South. I just, I had a brain fart like all of you guys have all the time. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, I'm human. If she had done that, instead of turned on the word salad switch. Right, we, right, right. She, you know what I mean? She would have come off as, now, she yeah, she should have played with this yeah. because she tried to, she tried to talk her way out of it when she just should have said, hey, I forgot. I, I, I had a brain fart. I'm human, like you. Well, you know what she said. She said to the guy who asked the question, "She's like, why do you think it started? 
He said, I'm not running for president. He says, I'm not running well, for she president. also he said exactly. that he was a plant. She believed that he was a plant by the Whoa. Democrats to try to trick her, which he <laughs> How do you trick someone? How do you not know what this guy is? I agree is? with you. We well, all know that. If it, the head of us, Biden, Biden would have said, it all started with Little Bighorn when General Custer got killed. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> no, he would, he would have said, I think with the BLM movement. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I want to ask you guys uh, some legitimate bodybuilding questions because I know you guys oh, have oh, all been oh, training. What sort, of show, what sort of, am I on the wrong show? Did you yeah, you're on the wrong show. Question? But <laughs> how many years have you been training now, Greg? 40 years, probably? 1972. So right. that's whatever that that's, is. What, 50 40, 50 years. Yeah. Years. And uh, I've been training over 30 years. John probably over 30. And then yeah, we probably. I started, I, 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 started in, I started in 72 with Greg, 51 wow. years. Wow. Yeah, that's right. It's 50, I was thought 41. It's 51 years. 51 that's 51 years, yeah. I started so, 85. So that's like. What, you've 30, seen 40, all 40? different types of, you know, workout, you know, plans and regimens over the years. Mm -hmm. And I was asked on Ask Dave the other day about push. Remember push pull legs? People used to do that. Yeah. All the pushing movements like uh, chest, shoulders, triceps, and then they would do back and biceps on a different day, and then they would do like legs mm -hmm. on a different day. I, I never liked that personally. I thought the shoulder day, the, the push day was too much. There was too much on that mm -hmm. one day. But what would you say over the years, Lee, uh, give us some of the different like training styles you did, like routines and stuff like that. What, what worked best for you? Just, just the plain old basics. I never. What's the basics? Any... Tell people what the basics well, are. Well, like if, if I was doing back, like you know, when I got ready for the Ironman, I mean the '97 Olympia, when Ira and that who trained Louis was training me. The odd occasion we might have superset it back and chest. So I do like chins. As soon as I finish chins, go do dumbbell press, that sort of thing. But generally, that was just chest day. I might do dumbbell presses incline and flat and then flies and then maybe incline dumbbell and then maybe incline fly and then maybe a smith machine or a hammer press and then crossovers and then maybe that afternoon i might have done triceps but i just stuck to the basics that's why you get a lot of questions now people say lee what's the best one for this and the best i said there is no best the best is whatever feel works for you the best because i could say barbell curl was the best for me i loved it but somebody might go, you know, when I do dumbbell curl and do that little twist, I feel that better. Well, if you feel that better, do that. Just because I do barbell curl, it's best for me. It might not be best for you. Everyone's trying to look for this one program that's going to work but, for everyone. If I know what you does, like, I can look like him. Did you like doing two body parts a day? I mean, did that work better for you? You like to do one body part per day? You know, yeah, I like doing two, like the bigger one in the morning and then maybe the smaller one in the evening. Right. And how much time between workouts would you take? Uh, well, I'd probably go in at always 5, 6 a.m. and then I'd go back about 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Okay. So you get, so did you take a nap in between? What would you do? Uh, no, I'd probably have like the free meals and just chill and watch TV. If I dozed off for 20 minutes, yeah, but I always was one of those people, if I had that nap, 80% of the time when I had the nap, I woke up and felt like dog shit, like it was right, just right. a deep sleep, but then you can't get going again, so I'd rather not. I'd rather not take the nap. <laughs> right. well, Greg, what was your uh, way of training back in the day? I did the standard what what I read in the magazines, what Arnold and every other bodybuilder did in mm -hmm. the seventies, and Which that is, is <clears throat> I did each body part three times a week. Right, three times. Yes, that was wow. what Arnold did it exactly that way. He would do like shoulders, uh, shoulders, back and biceps, shit like that, you know, ch you know, chest and, uh, uh, wait, Jesus Christ, shoulders, uh, biceps and triceps. Then he would do like back and, and chest, you know, and then legs, and then it would repeat shit like that. That's the way I did it. And that's I did, insane. But that's, that was, if you ever read the book, three more reps, right? Yeah. Every routine, every bodybuilder trained, each body part three times a week. And Arnold used to do 50 sets. The famous, the famous quote I've said a million times. One time he trained with Sergio Oliva, and he told Sergio uh, they did like 35, 40 sets for the biceps. And uh, Sergio said, I'm, I'm going to go hit the showers. And Arnold said, I'll see you in there later. He goes, I got another 10, 15 sets to do. Wow. So, mm -hmm. you know, they did high volume. He did a lot mm -hmm. of high volume. As far as weights went, I stuck to the basics like Lee did. And uh, I always feel like if you 
do, you have to feel it. It has to be your workout. You can't do what Arnold did. Mm -hmm. You can't do what Tom Platts did. You can't do what any of those guys. Did. Each guy, you know, has a different. I know a guy who just did a bench press. That's all he did for his chest. He had giant triceps and a giant chest. I know, you know, mm -hmm. I, I want a bench show. Okay, but my the, my chest wasn't thick. You know, I would get giant shoulders and shit. So each guy's different. You know, you got to find out what's right for you. Just like with food, same thing with food, not for nothing. Mm -hmm. but when you eat, eating should be instinctive. Everybody knows certain foods bloat them. You know what I mean? Jay Cutler can't eat oatmeal. He, he, he likes, uh, you know, cream of rice instead. There's different foods that, but you know, other people swear by oatmeal. You, you, you never know. You know what I mean? Some guys like a lot of beef because of the fat. Other guys won't eat that. And not just fish mm -hmm. you know, or combination fish and same, chicken. same as drugs too it's like everyone's looking for that special drug combination it's like you're going to find what works for you when it comes to stories you can't that. go oh this is ronnie coleman's stack i'm going to do that and be like <laughs> ronnie no it's not going to happen <laughs> yeah let me tell you some drugs is same thing it's instinctive man mm -hmm. how did you, Greg, but how did you did you train you must have had to do two sessions a day also. Did you train everything at once or did you train twice uh, a day? When I was real young, I trained everything at once. Then I did two twice a day, which killed me. But I was young and I recuperate. And, you know, uh, genetically, I was a freak like that. Remember, I wasn't taking steroids either. Weren't you mentally burnt out, constantly training the same body yeah. parts over yeah. and over and over again? No, I loved when, it. Though. When you're it's young, you're so full of excitement. and It's love the love of the, the game. Gym. Bro, I would go to the gym. Would then you take I days off? Wait, uh, Sunday. I, I would train every day except for Sunday. But the thing is, I would go to the gym, right? Yeah. And then I'd work out. And then I'd come home. I was in fucking school. So I'd go in my room at like fucking 12 o'clock at night and I'd start fucking doing shoulder presses and just a little uh, bit. You were out of your mind. Yeah. My mother would be like, put the goddamn weights away. Get your ass in that bed. <laughs> so then it actually helped me because what happened was I would put the weights on the bed so they wouldn't hear, hear them touch the floor when I was there. And then I take most of it, and I'd have to do real strict sets so they don't hear clank, clank. You know what I'm saying? He was probably so ADD in school, John, that the way that's, that's the most shocking thing about. I learned from that. that Greg, <laughs> Greg went to school. Greg went to school. That's the most shocking thing I learned from that. <laughs> Dude, in school, I would take off my shirt and run into lunch, uh, run into uh, the lunch time. And I do fucking I work out on a universal in there. I'd be doing a whole stack on a oh, bench. Oh, good those old universal machines that had all. Oh, that they were stuff. great. He was, that, well, he was that kid who who would train forty times a day if he could do it. Dude, I was in ninth grade and I was doing a stack. We had seniors who couldn't oh, bench yeah. the stack, <laughs> but I was obsessed with it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what? you know, wait, I want to say one more thing. You yeah. know, all you young kids, right, out there watching this, you you wonder how you know when you're doing something right. When your mother says, son of a bitch, I just bought those eggs yesterday, and they're gone. You know what I mean? Well, I just bought them cans of tuna. What the hell? Yo, Joe, you ate the goddamn thing. You better, you better go get a goddamn Where's all the milk? Oh. Where's all the milk going? <laughs> the milk, too. You better get a goddamn job. This kid's eating all the goddamn food. I you know what? You're going to pay for the eggs now. You go get a fucking carton of eggs. That's when you know I'm doing something right. <laughs> You know, I'm sure you experienced this too. Back, you know, back in the '80s and, and, and night, early '90s, no one ate the yolks. My fa it drove my father crazy to see those yolks in the garbage pail because you know we would use the whites and we throw the yolks away because everyone was afraid to eat fat back then. He would go nuts. You're wasting that. You're wasting the egg. You're throwing away half the egg. That's the most expensive part. I'm like, it's the fat. We don't need it. I didn't. Know I ate the whole oh. fucking thing. Lee Haney told me, God made the white with the yellow. Who am I to take them apart? <laughs> that, that my, like mom, my mom would keep the yolk and make no, homemade custard from it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you'd eat that, and you'd probably eat that. That's the funny thing, even though you were about to throw it away. You'd have the sugar and cream, cream to it. It makes it better. <laughs> That's right. You'd probably you know, know, you know, throw it away, and then she took it and made something and out of it anyway. Yeah. That, that's going to be Mr. G's next Bouchot. He's going to say, here's, here's how you make custard out of all the egg yolks. You <laughs> <laughs> need sugar in it and a little bit of it's isolized. <laughs> no, so it's a rain. Mongo spent right. 78 right. grams of fat in one teaspoon and yeah. 13 grams of protein. That's why I, when I used to eat meringue when I was dieting for something sweet. So I'm like, it's just egg whites fluffed up with sugar. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. No, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're right. It's John, what was your training regimen back then? I, I didn't really get a regimen until I fell in with Menser. And so 
um, well, Dave Masarakis first, who was Menser's like one of his proteges. And then, uh, yeah, when I first, when I ended up leaving Sports Connection and joining, you know, World World Gym and Gold's Gym, and I met Menser, I got to the because prior to that, I was training. I was I was in high school. I was running track, playing football. We only got to train three times a week, so it was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing. It was very basic, very simple. Like, Where was that? Greg, Where was that? In upstate New York, and in high okay. school. So when I got to Cali and I, and after a, six months or so there, I ended up at World Gym and I, at Gold's Gym. I mean, I met Menser and I don't know how, why or how we fell in. I don't remember the exact catalyst to that. But um, I, I got I got because it was a ma Masarakis. He gave me his books and then I met him at the gym. So yeah. um, it, it, I, I thought it was very his method. I thought was very logical because. Mm -hmm there was instead of an arbitrary number of of reps that you're going to shoot for and some kind of volume approach he would look for the for the all the reps you could do so instead of saying you know how many reps to say if you asked that question he'd say all of them so it, it, it made logical sense to me so i trained i started training like hey you know what he recommended which was which was one body part a week and if and according to him, if you trained it right and hard enough, it should still be sore almost by the next week. Right. So I think training it any more than that. He was very into like overtraining and recovery and making sure that you're paying attention to that because he said too many people you're seeing in the gym, let me point to this guy, that guy, overtraining, overtraining, overtraining. It's limiting your growth. It's limiting your progress. You got to rest. You got to recuperate. Your muscle grows when you're resting, not in the gym. And so he drummed that into my head and it, it, it just made sense to me. So I, I only, the most I ever did was in, at, with the height of my juice intake, the height of my training ability when I owned the gym was twice a day. I would get, you know, a big body part in the morning, a small body part in the afternoon um, or, a, or a cardio circuit type workout. Right. And that, that was, that was it. Exercises were always very, very, very basic. I used no machines except for the Nautilus ab machine. Um, weighted pull-ups, deadlifts, bench presses in various angles, flies, um, seated presses, fly, uh, you know, side laterals. That was it. I mean, very, very few exercises, but the ones we did were done, you know, balls out and, you know, till you were done. Mike, Matt, yeah, you used to Norris had, that, Norris had that good ab in a costal machine. You'd sit in it sideways and hold onto it. Yeah. And the nostrils on that. Yeah, I, this was that thick in your waist, though. I always was like worried about that. Yeah, but I still loved, and that Nautilus had that really good. You could do the pec deck on it with the big rollers, yep. bring them in, and, and then do press, your yes. Oh, yeah. I love that. that. One. I love that, that. That overhead ab thing that you went like yeah. this with. The, that was that is to this day the best ab machine ever invented. Wait, I love that fucking roller thing. That used to make my rear delts. Mm -hmm. wow. or, the, or the big or the leg extension with the chain on it. Yeah, yeah. But the chain yeah. is the greatest. The fucking my favorite equipment's the Nautilus. Because let me tell you something. Mike Benson ripped my ass. Used to fucking break my balls all the time. Oh, because he, you were a volume he guy. He came yeah. to my gym here where I live with oh. my friend Alex. Out, you know Alex, Alex Abe, yeah. and uh. He was in with Gruskin, and they would come to the gym, and he'd sit, and he'd watch, and he'd fucking be smoking a cigarette out in front. <laughs> and then fucking, what and was then he, he doing in your gym? Fucking tell me, you're not working out. What the hell is that? And I'm like, I went, I went, I went to Gold's one day. Mike was out the front, just standing in the car park. <laughs> <inside> <laughs> the he'd sit outside my smoking, smoking. He'd sit outside my smoking. And as I'm about to go, and he's like, Lee, come here, Look. come here. I'm like, I'm like, what is it, Mike? He goes, I finally figured it out. You know, Arthur Jones. I said, yeah, the invented Nautilus. He's God. He, he's God. I've worked it out. <laughs> you know that song, How Great Thou Art? That's about Arthur Jones. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Dave, Arthur Jones' disciple is the first, like, he, he opened up a gym over here, and it was a, a strictly Nautilus. And if okay. you did more than one set, he would fucking go insane. His name was oh. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, and he would train me. And oh my God, you, the people out there don't understand that they think like HIT hit all that bullshit. And you know, right. the, you, the heavy duty is to extreme failure. One set, if you could do a second set, you didn't, you didn't, didn't do, do it right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and that set lasts for like seven minutes. I mean, it's. Yeah. Oh, dude, I would fucking. Put the bucket next to the fucking nose because you're going to puke, man. He would kill me. 
kill. I got a yep. fucking picture of me sitting on that machine at like 60 I, I, years I still old. have nightmares of that curl machine with your <laughs> arms are right up here. And he's like yanking on it, you know, and like I'm trying to lift it. He's pulling it back. And Dude, he's yelling at me. He's going to blow my brains out. And all it was this. negative yeah. drop sets, partials, part, more partials. And then he, he pulled it to the point where you got to move. He lifted it, put it, yep. you, you were like fucking dude, I can't even. If you couldn't raise your arms like this, even with air. That's well, how. His, remember, remember his, the his, his, his theory or the Nautilus theory as explained by Mike was that you are looking for a momentary interruption yes. in the nerve impulse from your brain to that body part that you're telling to flex. It won't do it. So if you're saying curl, your brain is saying, come on, curl. Your arms just say, nope, they happen. And nope, sorry, yes. can't do it. Yeah, but you want to know something, John? It actually cost this guy. He was, he was trained by Arthur Jones. He was one of his original disciples. But I got to be honest with you. You start putting people through that routine in Nautilus, you start losing business because nobody yeah. wants, you know, training's got to be a little bit fun too. Right. They'll come here. back tomorrow because they can't, wait, they can't wash their hair that night. Did you mean? take the average person. See, I was fucking obsessed, so it right. didn't matter. I was doing it. But you take the average person. Then I would go home and work out again because I couldn't get yeah. that one set. I used, like, remember I had that love, I used to have that chin up, the chin up and dip machine. You'd put the belt on, clip it onto the white yeah. stack and do your chins and dips. Yep. With the yep. weighted stack, that was great. Yeah, you I had that in my house. Too. We just got rid, rid of it not too long ago. I love that machine. I think Nautilus 2 was one of the first. Remember that one you'd lay on your back, you'd put your legs on it, and you'd bring your legs down like yes, that? Yes, that's called the hip and back. One yeah, at yeah. Time. yeah, one at a time you do. The hip yeah. and back, that's what it, yeah. Dude, I, I had every one of his machines in my gym because I love the chain-driven, the original Nautilus. Right. Even yeah. the one over the head where you're fucking crawling like that and shit. I think he was one of the first to have the hip abductor right. too, like the fire yep. abductor. The right. abductor, yeah. abductor. It was one machine. You pull the fucking thing like yes. this. Yeah. And you drop it like this. It will close. That, that he, chest superset machine that had the, the pec deck at the no, top. Yeah. And the, yeah. And the, Press, but what his, his signature yeah. thing was to pull over and then yeah. the fucking pull right. down. Yeah, right? yeah. And you yeah. would die doing that fucking machine. You would yeah. die. Right. Let me tell you something. It hit the lower lat. It, it sweep of the lat. I got. Was th great. There was no level of pain I ever experienced <laughs> in terms of soreness and inability to touch a like the toilet seat, like sitting down on the toilet seat. I have to yeah. place to put my hand in the middle and like <laughs> gradually, you know. Sit, Menser tore me the fuck up every time. It was virtually impossible to move later that day after you know, those workouts. And pe people don't understand that. There's a, that, like Greg said, there's a there's, there's this a level of psychosis that allows mm -hmm. you to to go that far. Because any normal person would say, "Fuck this hurts." Stop. Oh, your That's brain, cool. your brain saying, "Stop, this is hurting." But right. your, your muscle can do more. You I always said your brain will give out way before your muscle does because, like you said, your body's got this defense mechanism. Hey, dickhead, what you're doing isn't good. Stop <laughs> doing it. But they just keep pushing your body. Right, you got to override. That. You know you what? Know. No, I was so nuts because I believed. You know, Arnold. I remember Arnold said I did the Mike Mentor. You know, I did that heavy duty shit with Arthur Jones and everything, and I got smoother and smaller. So my brain, even though I was so wiped out, I would try to go home and be like. I got to do some more. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. I'm not doing enough. I believe this, you know, the high mm -hmm. volume shit. So I would be trying to do high volume. He'd be shaking like this. I remember <laughs> doing a bench. Doing a bench, I got off, and I actually couldn't raise my hand. I had to like lift it up <laughs> because my triceps, my shoulder, everything was so pumped. And that's you know what though? That's when bodybuilding was beautiful for yourself. When you first start, you're so into it, and you right. start getting that pump, and you just don't like fuck. You don't give two shits. You know, you got a date with a hot chicken. You know, I, I was dating the hottest girl in high school. Not for nothing, bro. You had to see her in a bikini. She had all hair sticking out the side. It drove me crazy. What was her, her name? name? Huh? Hell of hell. Why am I going to say her name on hell here? Hell Holy shit. No, 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 no. Because, because she still lives around here. Her name. Uh, her, name was, her name was Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> the day she this. She wrote a beautiful well, book. She wrote a beautiful book. I wasn't always <laughs> ugly. I got to tell you that. But, um. <laughs> No, man, I'm telling you, though, I would fucking, I would, sh sh you know, be like at home. I'd be like, fuck it. I'll just tell her I got to do something. And uh, because I was so into like the fucking working out, it, right. you know what I mean? And I was afraid that just that one set, like my head, you know, you I wasn't accepted what they, what they were telling you, obviously. Yeah. Listen, Dave, I know some people are going to say, oh, I heard this before, but I always tell a story. Lee Labrada came to my gym, right? Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, 
you know, Greg, I was, you know, my wife and I, this is when he, when he was just dating Robin, they were, you know, mm -hmm. dating and, it, and she was with him and he goes, you know, I got to tell you something. We were just in this small town and we're in a restaurant. I look outside and I see this giant, like 2000 pound bulls, right? You know, these giant bulls and they're hooked in by a little rickety little fence. And that's all that's stopping these 2000 pound bulls from just knocking down that fence and just getting the fuck out of there. And he goes, I sat there and I said, Jesus, you know, they're like conditioned. They conditioned their brains to walk up to that fence and just walk back. You know what I mean? And, and he said, it made me think in my head, how many times bodybuilders build fences in their brain? Like I have to do it this way mm -hmm. or I'm, I'm not going to do it. You're like, I'm mm -hmm. fucking up. So he, he said, bodybuilders build fences in their brains. They think it's got to be this way. Got to bench, got to squat, or you're never going to do any, you got to yeah. take this, got to do this. And he said, if they would just learn to go beyond those fences, you, you know, it's a whole different world. And he's the one who really made me realize, and Lee, if you're watching this, I never forgot you telling me that, but he made me realize, you know, like I got to cut down on some of this because I was, I would do three hour bicep routes. Is that fucking nuts? You know what I mean? As I, as I described the gym, he believed you'd always turn the air off, the fans off. I'm like, why do you keep doing that? He's like, if you don't sweat, you're not working out. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, you've got to sweat. If you if you never sweat while you're training, you, that means you haven't had a proper workout. I'm like, <laughs> but in his head, he had to sweat every time. He had sweat everywhere. I'm thinking, what the fuck are you on about, man? I'm thinking, shit, I must have been training hard there because some days I don't sweat at all. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Lee's the biggest guy in the gym. You know, what I just to reiterate, you know, I started with that whole eight late eighties, early nineties mentality, mm -hmm. high volume. You know, I came from a, like a distance running background. So the more the better, you know, with running. That's how it works. So I was doing three hour workouts, you know, I was doing two body parts, you know, trying to do the 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 triple splits or double splits, I guess you would do, you know, your whole body over three days, then you do it again. And then you take the sixth, the seventh day off usually. But initially I wasn't taking any days off because I, and runners don't take days off. And so, you know, and obviously I wasn't making the gains I should have. So I started to, you know, once I started getting, you know, training with other people, the workouts were not as long because they didn't like Doug Wentz never trained. He was a grushing guy. They didn't train that long. They were, you know, it was an hour and a half workout. And, I started growing better and then Menser came about or mid nineties when he started with Dorian and Hey, this is, you got to do low volume, you know, matter of fact, one set. And, and, you know, I started listening to what he was saying and it made sense because I, I, I realized that I really wasn't recovering. I was training too much. I wasn't taking enough days a week off. And I, I always felt like when I trained two body parts, the second body part never got the same, the, as good a workout as mm -hmm. the first body part. So I started doing one body part per day, once a week. And that's when I started making my best gains. But what I saw what Dorian was doing with Menser with the one set, you know, they would do two exercises for a body part, like one set per exercise, like those all out sets. I said, I tried it once and I said, you know what? This is dangerous. I said, I, I, I can see myself tearing a muscle. Mm -hmm. because I felt like when you get so fatigued, you're not really controlling the weight enough. And then people are doing forced reps on you. I felt like vulnerable. And I felt like, you know what? I'm going to hurt something. And I, and I think that's what happened to Dorian. He started hurting himself doing those workouts because he, his mind was so strong, but you know, when you're weak and, and you, and your muscles are in failure and you're still trying to push that hard, a lot of times you can, you can injure yourself. Well, so I yeah. kind of stopped short of the one or two sets and I started just doing less volume. So instead of doing four sets per exercise, I would do two sets per exercise instead of doing, you know, uh, 25 sets for a body part, I would do, you know, 12 or 13 sets. And I, and for me, that worked really well. And every time I tried to do more for maybe the first two weeks, it worked. And then I would go backwards, you know, and I, and I would start noticing that I'm, I look smaller. I'm not recovering. I'm, I'm losing my desire to go to the gym. And so, you know, like Greg said, you have to kind of see what works for you, but just in my scientific analysis of everything, I think less is better. And I think you need more days off than you think. Everyone does. That is now. Now well, we're, we're fucking all. You know, I'm, I'm not talking. I'm talking when you're in your twenties and thirties. I think most now people I have to. Yeah, off. I think that. minimum two days a week you should take off from weights. Yeah. You should not do weights yeah. for two weeks. Two days a week. Do you remember that good universal? Universal used to have that flat leg extension and leg curl all in one machine. Yeah, I used to train at Nautilus. I used to train at Nautilus Newcastle, and they had one, and they used to have that belt. So. Doing leg extensions, you could lay flat on your back, 
the belt would go around the bench and on you, so you're laying flat on your back and all you could use was your legs. You could hold onto the belt here. It was the most painful thing because, you know, doing leg extensions, you grip the bench and you pull a bit and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It was just all legs and it was the most painful thing because you couldn't use nothing else but your legs. Oh, it was, it was... But wait, Lee, the nothing up to, <coughs> excuse me, the Nautilus machines had seat belts on them. If you're yeah, right. Right. They, had, they, had, they, they had seat belts on them. So yeah. when you when you do the Nautilus leg extension, that fucking mm -hmm. cam with the fucking you know the oh, the, yeah. you know, the cam with the the, the oh, chain, that mm -hmm. thing was the best leg extension oh, because yeah. you see so many people off. doing leg extensions and they'll be on the bench under this machine and they're pulling and they're pulling on the yeah. bench. Dave, <laughs> I'm gonna grab a I'm gonna I'm running to that computer. I'm gonna grab a picture for a second of me at 15 years old in that Nautilus gym That's on, the, on, on the floor. Floor. Yeah. that machine right there. That right one right there. there. I had right every one. Hold on, I'm gonna grab this. Gold, the gold yeah, still has some of the original Lord Nautilus in that second room. They have like the like they had, Did you know they had a woman's pullover for, and a men's pullover? The woman's was smaller. Did yes. you know that? Oh, that's sexist. That's sexist. <laughs> but Dave, I want to come back to the the, the thing right. about um, how many sets they were doing. Right. It was it was it was one work set. But they would right. do they would do two or three warm up sets to get right. to get to the work set. The mm -hmm. work set was the one set, so right? They mm -hmm. didn't count the warm up sets. Oh, but if you, okay. were doing, if you were doing like bench presses. I mean, Dorian was Dorian would do incline bench presses with four plates on each side. He didn't start right. with that. right. right. He, he well, people, people used to make that mistake because people go to me, "No, Lee, what you do is." You just do one warm up and go straight to the heavy. So I'm like, no, so if I was doing squats, yeah. right. I said, if I was doing squats and I warmed up with one plate, once I've done that, I'm going to jump straight to six. I'm like, fuck that. You'll die. Yeah, you'll <laughs> die. Yeah. The, the, the thing with Menser, though, which I, I think was the most valuable lesson I learned early, was the misconception that mu you build muscle in the gym. You right. don't. You yep. stimulate. Mm -hmm. You stimulate muscle growth in the gym. You grow in bed. So mm -hmm. I had it backwards. I was thinking, I got to hurry up, get to the you're gym, right. work out for six mm -hmm. hours. Otherwise, yeah. you're not, you know, you're not going to grow. It's exactly the opposite. You stimulate mm -hmm. that growth response, and then you go home and rest. Well, that's why you got to take days off, right? Exactly. So Mentor would always say, "Look, you you got to go rest because that time is in short supply. You can get out of the gym as fast as you can and go home and rest." So eat, it, eat and sleep. Yeah. yeah. Eat and sleep. Exactly. I literally, I, I would say, I've told the story a million times. I would train a body part like back or legs, like a really tough, I'd come home, drink a shake because I was nauseous from the workout and I would just lay down. I, you know, in, in my heyday, when I had, when I was making good money, I would sleep for two hours during the middle yeah. of the day. That, I that, that, that nap, that oh my God. training, you eat a high glycemic meal right, right after you train <laughs> and then lay down. That yeah. is, the ultimate recovery you could possibly do for yourself is a two-hour nap after. And a shot of GH doesn't hurt either, John. <laughs> well, well, even well, even Arnold would tell me. <laughs> even Arnold would tell me at World Gym sometimes in the morning they'll do chest sometimes twice a day in the morning they'll do all the heavy incline benches, dumbbells, blah blah blah. Go relax at the beach, or they come back in the afternoon and do all like the pec decks, the crossovers, the fly movements, and all that. So that hit all the really heavy hardcore presses in the morning, then come back in the afternoon and do all the other, like I said, more slower, yeah. lighter weight squeezing movements. I mean, I, it just didn't make sense to me to go back and do a same body. And I know guys that did that. <laughs> because Dave, you're breaking could... down the muscle and then you're healing it by resting all day and then you're going back and breaking it down again. It's, it's... Jake, Dave, check your text messages. I just sent you oh. two pictures. One of me no, at 15. No. And... Be I, careful. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I love the Nautilus machine. I fucking love that stuff. That's old, you? Yeah, that's 15 <laughs> years old. Hold on. Has he got hair? He's got hair and everything. Oh, yeah, I had a see, lot of hair. You see the hair he's got here. Good. <laughs> you yeah, gotta remember, like, it's 1975. He looks, he looks like Ken Kuhn. <laughs> 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 oh, this is 1975. Then you look at the other picture. You see me at 15, and then 19. It looks like it looks like the guy from Pumping Iron. How old are you in those pictures, Greg? Right? 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 With the curly hair, 15, and the other hair, 19. He, Remember, he looks like he's 35 in these pictures, John. That's why he was getting the hot girls because he was very precocious as as a kid. He, he had a Jufro before it was fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> he had the broccoli hair. He had the broccoli hair early. 
<laughs> Watch. You, the curly hair was 15, and the other hair, like this, there's, there's one with two pictures, me, 15 and 19. The 19, you can still see my high school football helmet right there at my feet, black and white television in the back, you know? He, you you definitely you know, there's no gap in my mind. There's no gap in my mind. What's that? You had definitely had a very high testosterone level naturally. Oh yeah, dude, no I doubt in my mind because you look like you're 35 in, the, in these pictures. I mean, from a maturity standpoint, you know. No, I was in high school. I was 15. No, I know, but, but that's because you you had so much testosterone in your, in your body. Oh yeah, look at that's that. That's me. Look at that hair. That's 15, and then there's that. Oh, that's that, 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 that's Kenny Waller. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what? Whenever I see these pictures of him, especially the one where he's nineteen, there's a, there's a couple other ones where he's a little older. Look at those Greg, arms. Greg had mm -hmm. a, a phenomenal physique. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I wasn't on truck. I didn't even now, know what's going on right there. Still, and I've known you for thirty years, bro. Yeah. And I still, to this day, boggles my mind that you would think. That sticking all of that fucking oil in that physique was going to be a good thing. <laughs> well, it was steroid oil, so I loved it. So, it just doesn't. I, and I think about. And I think okay, there's John the one right there. The like real crazy thing was that he never competed before when he started taking steroids. Right, but see, there's the thing. There's right, that arm. It's like 19 like inches. You would have been a pro. Starts jacking it. And it gets to 20, then 22, yeah. then 25. Yeah. Now it's a 27, <laughs> and he's still going. Gee, gee, gee. And it's like, what were you thinking, dude? <laughs> remember, I remember, I remember back, on the, remember back on the get for? big. I remember back on the get big boards in the, in the early 90s. People would be like. Valentino has bigger arms than you, Leo. Like, I'll be like, yeah, but mine's muscle. He's just full of oil. There's this big argument going back and forth. You know what? I would have loved. To, I would have loved to see what your arm looked like without all the oil in it, but with the steroids in your body. You would have had twenty-two inch arms. Oh, I did. He had twenty-two inch arms did. before when I first he started taking steroids. I was like fucking huge. But I was only 170, maybe. You know what I mean? Right. But if you would have taken steroids and competed, you would have been a freak. Dude, I could suck my stomach in my waist. It would have been 198 light heavyweight. I was only about, was no only about 170 when I won my first overall Mr. Australia at 17 years old. I was about 74 kilos, whatever. You were natural, too. Right? Well, yeah. it, I never even knew what steroids were because the magazines didn't talk about steroids till like, the right. late 80s started coming in. You know what I mean? Right, right. But, but my waist, I used to with John, do you remember? Because you're, like, you're older like me. I used to wear sweet or pants because they were like like the I like the way the high waist was and shit. You remember sweet ors? You know, I mean, almost like capizio pants or whatever the hell those capizio yeah, yeah, exactly. shoes. Did you wear those too? Yeah, the white shoes. Is that the one John Travolta had on at the end of Staying Alive? Those. Pants? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. That's why. I but uh, but when, when I had a tiny waist. You know what I mean? Like yeah. really small. I was wearing like 26 inches. When I, when I used to stand on stage, my waist was small. I deliberately put my hands on my hips when I was standing there like this. I can't do it now. And when I put my hands there, my fingers would touch. So I deliberately stand there on stage with my fingers touching like that to show how small my waist was. <laughs> I used to do the same thing. Put my hands yeah. on my waist. I could go like this, you know? Yeah, and you could touch oh. your fingers. Then I'd be looking at people going, yep, like this. I used to do that around <laughs> my bicep. I remember the one time I had a show, I turned around between me and Dexter. I think I ended up beating him, but it was like, as soon as I went to the back, he puts his hand on my glute and went like that and goes, like acting like my glutes were soft. I'm oh, like, God. fuck this. So I turned around, <laughs> bent down, rubbed his calf and went. <laughs> <laughs> the guys would do funny shit like that back in the day. Yeah. I know. It was fun. Today, yeah. everybody's too intense, though. That's the whole thing. It was yeah. fun oh. back day today everybody's too intense they're so that's because mm -hmm. everything is so you know uh, mm -hmm. chemical uh, you know you look good five yeah, minutes who was it who was it was a Kumir or somebody that one time when ronnie's belly was a bit bloated when they went for an ab shot sort of patted ronnie on the stomach a bit yeah, and they yeah. Probably, I, I think it was jay jay that was jay, was it jay? Was it jay? I, I, don't, I always wish that john mcenroe was was, was a bodybuilder <laughs> oh. <laughs> you imagine him yelling at the judges you can't oh. be serious <laughs> in second or third place he'd be throwing the trophy <laughs> the difference is in tennis everyone is so prim and proper right Weinberger would have knocked him out. Imagine he would have shot up and. Imagine Charlie Arms being one of them. What a fucking ball! Don't you guys find it a little surprising that nobody sucks anybody in the mouth on the stage yet? 
No, yeah, I know. Man. I'm, I'm Mac so Mac surprised Mac that hasn't happened. Because everyone's going to be on a big cycle. Macro will be on a big cycle. And he doesn't get in the first call out, that would be it. He'd fucking go. <laughs> See, the difference is in tennis, you can tell the, the referee to go f themselves, and then you can wind up hitting six, six, 16 aces in a row and winning the match. It, I know. It, it's all based on your talent, not about what are you? Talent. What are you? Blind? The ball was in. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it doesn't matter, though, because if you're a better tennis player, it, the judges really don't have any influence. Where right. the body right. the judges are making the decision. So, you know, it's like figure skating. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the French you know. judges that got caught that time when they were rigging that figure skating one year, remember? They were somehow dealing the oh, score. Right, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah, but if you fucking told one of the judges on the IFBB, go fuck yeah. yourself, you're done. You're done. Yeah. You could look well, I couldn't even understand that figure skating because you'd watch it sometimes and somebody would do this beautiful routine, not one fucking trip, not one whatever. Someone does one, they have a few little hiccups here and there, and they get a higher score. I'm like, fuck, this is well, like bodybuilding. They executed, isn't it? A, more difficult they executed a more difficult routine. They right. did and the like triple, because... triple lux, triple lux, double axle, fucking whatever. It's well, all, all, of those, all of those moves have points associated to mm -hmm. them. So if you hit yes. a double axle yeah. and you, your skate, your toe is pointed like this, well, there's a tenth of a point off. You right. Know, so, but so there's remember the oh, total, of difficulty of your team dictates the score. Plus, it depends on who the judges are, what country they're from. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of John McEnroe, how funny is this? A story just popped up <laughs> that he, I guess, and this is this is pretty applicable to the bodybuilding. Remember how we, we always say they should put the men bodybuilders on first because it takes too long and they're waiting. Right. McEnroe was complaining because I guess in the Australian Open. It, a lot of times these matches take hours and hours oh, and hours. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, why don't you just have an extra day so that if you, you don't mm -hmm. have to put every, jam everything into two days. And so now they're finally – it took like 10 years. They're finally listening to him. They're, they're adding another <laughs> day. <laughs> Same thing with us. I mean, in bodybuilding, if, if you need an extra day, you, you take. why can't they give us an mm -hmm. extra day? No, you can't do that because the venue is going to cost them another twenty grand, you know, or whatever. It doesn't matter. That it's supposed to be about the athletes, you know. It's you know th that's such a good point because you know we have grown as a sport to encompass. Mm -hmm. When bodybuilding started out, it was men's bodybuilding. That's right. it. Yeah. And then you know the women came, and then you know we yeah. got fitness, and then figure, yeah. and then bikini, and then classic, and then on and on. So the sport division by division by division is growing. Mm -hmm. If they still cram it into the same two days, I know. So, you know, <laughs> if, if you're going to grow the sport, grow the sport. You know, don't just grow mm -hmm. the divisions and then fuck out all the audience and the. And the and the spectators by cramming you know yeah. twenty eight hours of shit into ten hours. And they didn't have the men and the women on the same in the same weekend. No, there were standalone events. Yes. Hey, but just the in that Olympia, test. the mid, when Corey was competing right. in the Miss Olympia, it used to sell out the Felt Forum mm -hmm. in Madison Square Garden. But oh, but John, you, you can't do all these courses and classes. I mean, <laughs> they should have bodybuilding and that's it. Miss Olympia, Miss. Yeah. You know, nobody watches half that shit. I, I've been in an auditorium when the girls are up there, and I'm like, where the fuck is everybody? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody wants to see that shit. Well, you know, I guess it should be it should be the men's open, the classic, and the women's physique or the bodybuilding women. And yes. then the other day, have your bikini, the, the physique, and all that. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I could never – I can never wrap my head around forcing the audience to stay in their seats – if right. I'm a promoter and I sell you a ticket for a hundred bucks, I got your hundred bucks. I exactly. hope you don't even show up. I don't want your footprints uh -huh. on the carpet. Uh -huh. You know, that just that's don't like, even come. Like, just I asked, John. So I asked. Like, I asked the like team judge, <laughs> well, I asked one of the famous judges. I don't want to say his name. I'll tell you guys off the air who it was. Okay, and I said, "How the fuck do you judge the bikini girls?" He said, "You know, he said to me, I pick which ones I think I would fuck first. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> the, the top few five few I would fuck." That. Because every one of them, I you ever go backstage and you're like, all the same, hey, pie, you know. But meanwhile, every <laughs> one of them looked the fucking same. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's like, the, like John said, they got the money for your ticket. That's like these 24 hour gyms. 
once you sign a contract and join up, they don't care if you never come to the gym. They're deducting exactly. your money every month, so they don't care. Look, that's wow. my high school football helmet and a black and white TV right below my fist. Look at that hair. Look at that hair. You still have, have that black and white TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I use it for noise. Yes. <laughs> Can you see that? Still there. That's me at 19. The other's me at 15. You Crazy. lost the picture tube in 1983. I think I look pretty goddamn good for 15 years old. Yeah, you think at 15, that was 16, I had a mullet. I had a mullet in my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, mullets came later after me, but that's like that's total 70s. Look at the hair. That 70s afro look, yeah, exactly. 70s afro look. Look when at I that. When I competed, I pulled my hair back into a little plait at the back when I was like 17. And then, oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I remember oh, when that came around. The first time I saw somebody with a little rat tail in the 80s, I was like, Oh, this wasn't a rat tail. This was more like a proper. I hated it. No, I, I remember them all the time. And I had that one little piece. I feel like pulling it off when you see that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Steve, the Steve Carroll ponytail, right, John? Yeah, yeah, the rat tail. I think I think the two best sets of hair back in the day were probably you know, the Barbarian brothers. They both had a good set of hair, those two. Yeah, they did. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't want to break anyone's bubble, but, you know, they wore wigs, you know, toward what? Yes. Oh, you mean at the end when they got their faces fixed? Yes. And then they had that rock star. When someone got into a car accident and burned their head, and one of the brothers, I think it was Peter, and then David said, "I'll wear a wig too." And they both started wearing the wigs with those long wigs. They were they were good wigs though. But they then they got shit pumped in their cheeks and shit. They you look sure? like their faces look fake. You you think so? Yeah, man. Yeah. After that, I was you know, in ninety three. What Greg means is later, way later, when we were watching oh, yeah. for MD. Right. Yeah. Not when yeah. they were, yes, later yeah. on. Right. But when I was there in 81, and I used to have to drive them home, and they're farting in front of me, and picking, <laughs> walking to a girl, he used to pick his nose with his pinky, like this. And, and the girl's hot, you know. And Cameo Newer was standing there with that little thing up her ass. You know, Corey, 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 yeah. Everson's sister. She's fucking, and I'm like sitting there going, "Oh my god, I, I, look at that ass! Like, there's no way that she farts or shits out of that ass. That's beautiful. It's perfection. I believe if she farts, it smells like one of Mr. G's chocolate chip cookies. I mean, no bad could come out of that ass. And he's talking to her, and he's digging with a cookie like this." Not even a pointer, like the Italians. We do the pointer. He's doing a pinky, you know. While he's talking to her, and I'm wonder, like, Holy whatever fuck. happened to David? Whatever happened to that David's beautiful church that he turned into his house? Whatever happened to that house? I don't know who got a hold of that when he died. Yeah, he died in his sleep. I don't know what who oh, took over the church. Beautiful. That was a beautiful thing that he built, wasn't it? I think there was a guy who actually owned it and that let David fix it up and just live there. I, I, I believe that was the Dude, they, You yeah. know what they reminded me of? Like Babe Ruth. When Babe Ruth grew up in a fucking orphanage, right? Right. Uh -huh. His father at like nine or eight years old brought him to an orphanage and just said, I can't handle this kid. Take him. <clears throat> so he grew up in an orphanage. So he didn't have any like – he was running nothing but boys all the time. You know, like, look at my pee-pee, you know, that kind yeah. of shit, right? So when they, when they brought him up for the minor leagues, he was a superstar, right? Mm -hmm. And and he brought him up for the minor leagues to, for the Boston Red Sox. And when he interviewed him, uh, they said, "So, babe, do you have anything to say? You know, you're now going to be a major leaguer." You know, blah 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 blah. And he looked around. He didn't know what to do. So the little boy in him lifted up his leg and he went like this. Uh -huh. Dude, that's 1914. You understand? That was 1914. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Uh, and, and the Barbarian Brothers reminded me of him. They were like backwards. They didn't, They were like such like well, Dave, boys. Dave was, Dave was the funniest. Every photo shoot you did with him yeah. was always an adventure. We'd go somewhere, he goes, I found the perfect location. We get there. Gates are locked. Warning, do not enter. I said, Dave, we can't go in. <laughs> oh, we'll find the fence. It's okay. We'll go in. I said, Dave, I'm not go in. Every time. It's like only like we went to the train yard thing where they did the boxing bag pictures. Yeah. We're yeah. shooting away, shooting away. Woo! Police car pulls up. I'm like, oh, fuck you. They, <laughs> yeah, he's, come he's in, so um, yeah, they come in and he's like, yeah. He looks over, he goes, you're Lee Priest, aren't you? I said, yeah. He goes, oh, he goes, I saw the Dodge Viper. He goes, you're at the firehouse yesterday and a couple of my other friends on patrol saw you and saw you had the Viper. So I put two and two together. He's That's like, funny. you're not, you're not meant to be here, but you can stay. So these two cops got into photos with us. They oh, were really they? Like, That's cool. But yeah. And that was like the other time we went down, downtown Santa Monica. Lee, I got an idea. Get a priest outfit. I get it. Where are we going? 
see this big cathedral? We're going there. Like, you want me to go in dressed like this? He goes, yeah, go in. I walk in. There's people down the front in the pews all praying. Stand down the front where it's got the big thing and just do your like crucifix poses. And stuff. <laughs> so I'm standing there doing all these poses. As I'm walking out, people are like, hello, Father. Hello. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's funny. No one said anything to you? No, but they actually, some people just said farm. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you were a real priest? Oh, my God. Yeah, like the proper, the proper priest. He had the outfit on. The collar, yeah, the collar, before everything. the face tattoos. No, I did that before. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Those they, motherfuckers, they, they would make me take them home, and then they'd be like, store, then I got to get my mail. I remember going to this post office. And it's the first time I ever said he had hooks like this. So if you try to back up, it would fucking fuck up your tires and shit. Right. Like, no, don't worry about that. Just go around over here. And I'm like, holy fuck, man. I thought it was just giving you a ride home. I didn't know it was going to be your, like, taxi and shit, you know? <laughs> there, it was always an adventure with those guys. Because oh, I, I flew in. Blackman flew me in. This, this is before, like... You can do like online like recordings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So Blackman flew me to California for one day to inter just to interview Dennis Wolf, and they Comstack filmed them in the gym, and then I interviewed him for like an hour just to get that video because he was consumed. Ah, Olympia, we need Olympia coverage. He was obsessed and with Dennis yeah. Wolf. So I told the Barbarian Brothers, I said, I said, guys, I'm going to be in Cali for for the day. So I got nothing to do after I'm done in, in this gym. <laughs> so they met me there, both of them. <laughs> and, and they just took me. I, I said, "All right, I, I don't have to be at the airport till like midnight." So I hung out with them the whole day. It was it was the most insane day of my life. <laughs> we went to some of the crazy, and David and Peter lose shit all the time. I left my phone at the at, at the restaurant. I said, "That's like thirty miles away." We got to go back and get. It was like just one mishap after another. But I had a I had a lot of fun. Well, with it, I got to tell you. Do, well, do you remember that funny, photo thing, shoot? The, and, go ahead. Right. Well, I was going to say, what would have been funny would have been the Barbarian Brothers and Mr. G and his brother hooking up together back in the oh day. My God. <laughs> I think they were actually together. At no, one they point. were. They yeah, were. Were they? they yes. Yeah, we went to dinner. <laughs> we all Vegas. went to dinner. In yeah, in Vegas yeah. at the Olympia. Do you know, I, that was a classic scene going, you know, because in Vegas, you got to go wheel every all your luggage through the casino to get to the. <laughs> so the Barbarian Brothers, Blackman sends them out to the, shoot the, the Olympia. Between the two of them, they don't own one suitcase. <laughs> so they pack, they're in the grocery bag, those beige grocery bags. And they got one of those wheeling, those carts, those bellhop carts. And they got all these bags hanging from the hooks. Right? And that's all their luggage. And then they got like the camera shit and the fucking, and they're wheeling this thing through the, through the, the, the casino with all those bags swinging like this and they're hitting people as they're walking by it, it was you don't remember they're the most walking in, they're walking in bare feet too they used to take their shoes oh, off they, yeah, they had no they had no shoes on in, in the in the Luxor hotel they walked the bare right, feet Luxor. all the time but typical David Paul fashion do you remember what he lost his camera no, he lost the keys to the oh, car. Yeah. He dropped them somewhere in the hotel. So we were scouring this the, the Luxor <laughs> lobby. And it took like three hours, but we actually found the keys there. He lost his camera, too. He couldn't yeah, yeah, that he always did. Yeah, he he that real old. Blackman <laughs> bought him on an Apple laptop to his payment for the thing, and he lost that, too. Lost I remember that like real old camera. Yeah. Yeah. He'd always have that old Polaroid. You take the photo first, and then he'll develop yeah. it in the world. Yeah. That's my, my boy, my, my boy oh, Brian Moss God. does the same shit. But yeah, you know what's yeah. funny? Uh, it, it, Barbera, I remember sitting with him and he's like this. And I'm like, look at that fucking burger. He goes, it's Colby beef. Remember? Because Bar Blackman bought us all dinner. We oh, were at right, right, right. steakhouses. And he was eating a Colby beef uh, burger. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember that photo shoot? I think he did it with Jay Cutler with the big O. The, that giant. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the people don't know the story behind that. When David David got that O, it was part of the word radio, and he had to buy the whole thing. He couldn't just <laughs> buy the O. He had to buy all the letters, <laughs> right? Yeah, he had to buy. So he had to start st store all the other five letters to get the O. 
for, for that was like when he had the thing and he carted that fucking piano out into the All desert for Flex Wheeler. And <laughs> shit, this big grand piano. <laughs> the, the shit he'd come up with would be like... Just, you know, <laughs> big, Greg just mentioned Brian Moss. It was Brian Moss and David Paul were the Brian only Moss, two Brian photographers Moore, yeah. in our entire industry that had any kind of real, real yeah. artistic sense about that yeah brian moss bought a lot of like jubinville equipment like old school like 1950s machines he has a whole gym for it. He, yeah, he recreated an old gym he, down he, to the thumb tax, Greg. he went on he fucking scoured the internet for the real old-fashioned thumbtacks the silver ones these are, these are like collector's items now yeah. Look at this. i know because yeah. you're good mine yeah i remember that. Yep. Look at that people people think that's the world this was taken out the back of palmdale where they do all the video clips, there's white walls that oh, are built right. and waterfalls. That's actually the sky. I'm just got my arms up and the Wait wall behind Give me. The 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 that's not the sky, Lee. That's not the sky. <laughs> and he, he's Jay on. He's Jay on the back. Oh yeah, the, you, you can get one of those Olympia ball. ones there. Yeah. Yep. He rented the crane with that. That's yes. a crane and a ball, a wrecking ball. Yeah. And he had to get the crane to that location. How, who drove it there? I don't know. That's. The whole thing. Probably, Quincy, probably Peter did or something like that. You know? Quincy, what's, Quincy what's Peter, how is Peter doing now? What is he doing? I don't think he's doing that well, to be honest with you. There's, yeah. there's Flex in the desert with that big piano. Oh, the piano, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was great. The grand piano. The baby grand piano. But like, he'd pack up his stuff. And like the stuff he would have in places was like... Well, the, you know, oh, what people don't realize is Bob to Kennedy was paying him big money for those pictures, Ali. Yep. I don't know if you can even get this book Bob anymore. Kennedy was the good you man. Can't. He yeah. made well, he made a few copies. Oh, that look, was it. Even Rico one. McClinton made a, yep. a section in here. I have the same book. I have one of the originals. Signed well, I'd, have, I'd have to smell that paper before well, I could this. this could be a controversial picture these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that Jesse Smollett? Is that Jesse Smollett? <laughs> He always had like there's always like a, there was always some kind of meaning behind all the pictures. It was very he was a yeah, true artist. Like, yeah, always had, like, totally. Weirdest. Totally. And the thing was, when you come up with the ideas too, you'd be like, "Dave, that sounds a bit shit." But this was us in that big warehouse where the police turned up. There was an actual picture. I don't know if it was in the book, but this was out in the desert where he's having me hang under the Hummer. He had someone actually driving it slowly. You can't tell here, but it's like drive slowly because if you drive slowly, Lee, you got to lift your legs up and hold on tighter. I said, Dave, say if I fall off and go under the car, he's like, that's high enough. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make a good picture too. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But there, these were these were the famous one here that ProLab used that boxing bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, everyone used that yeah. picture. Yeah. That was that warehouse where the. There's another one. There's I another good one. one. That was a good. That was a good thing. Uh, then he had his barbarian sword. He wanted me to hold that. And they were a good book, this, like a good coffee book. Here's a, I, I found a really good old picture of them. Here's a really old good picture of them. Let me pull up, hold on. The one on a horse? Look, even signed. No, this is the older one. Than that. On a horse? Oh, yeah, I remember that. so young there. But, but they're young, yeah. The one on a horse was amazing. That's oh, the one we that heard. The one from the, remember the one from the Barbarian movies where they were both on the horse? Where, Greg. What, what were the two yeah. movies they done? One was the Barbarians and the other was... um. Don't go pee-pee pee in a pool, Jeffrey. I remember that. Uh, Greg, do, do you remember like like the something babysitters, thing. right? Something babysitters? Yeah, yeah, barbarian yeah. barbarian yeah. babysitters or something like oh, that? Was that, uh, John? Do, do you remember the day Joe Gold, uh, Joe Weeder showed up at the gym and a bar, it was the first time the barbarians were going to meet Joe Weeder and they were training like fuck. <laughs> you were there, you were training with them. I was and training they, in the gym. And one of them puked Joe right when Joe Weeder walked through the door. One of them pukes, and he, the other one takes his big rubber mat and throws it over the puddle of puke. <laughs> yes, I saw him puke. He puked on on me once. He used to drink carob milk. C A R B. flavored milk. It was like chocolate, and he would puke the milk up. <laughs> on the floor, and they would throw a mat all the time to cover it up. I had a call with me, and he puked, and, it, and I had this Mexican chick with me, right? And he puked, and it splatted on her shoes. And she was, like, she cried and ran the fuck out of there. And then I, I she wouldn't answer my calls, and I, like I was done with her because of that. 
<laughs> I never I know how they trained. They always trained in those jeans with the belt. They did either have the flannel shirt on yeah. with that big open neck cut shirt. Oh, and just oh, the yeah. jeans, the big like rock rock star yeah. boots. But you know what's funny? I one time saw him. I was walking to the gym, and uh, it, right where Mike Christian used to live in a hotel, actually. He was a mm -hmm. caretaker. He was yeah. a caretaker. This is when he won the California. He was a caretaker in a hotel. And uh, actually, I went into his apartment. His girlfriend offered me soup and shit, but whatever. They, he gave me the underground steroid handbook. He was the one he who had gave the leftover soup with Lee Haney's pasta still. <laughs> I'm gonna now I have the Lee Priest. I'm gonna show the Lee Priest one, but um. So anyway, I'm walking right over by that hotel. There was a, I, I saw there was like a little party or something going right not, right not far in between goals and worlds. And I'm, I'm walking aside. We're going to see all these birds, right? And they're fucking like eating. And what it was is one of the barbarian brothers puked over the side of this fucking balcony. <laughs> and the birds were eating his vomit. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! You know, the seagulls turned into pterodactyls. It was strong as hell too. I remember those reverse oh, grip oh, five hundred pound see. bench presses. David used to do. Yeah, I used to do. Remember those photos of them doing like one hundred and forty pound dumbbell curls and shit. Yep. Was oh yeah, crazy. dude! I would love when they would act up in the gym. They would act up. You remember Dean Tornabine? Remember Dean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, little Dean. Yeah. Yeah, little Dean. <laughs> my training partner. I love that fucking guy. He was funny. And he'd be like, oh, they're ducking us. And they're like saying all kinds of shit. And the Barbarian Brothers would be going back and forth with him. And, yeah, baby. You know, they were like, it was fucking. I sometimes I want to just sit there and watch them guys, you know, because I was like yeah. 21 years old. I remember when Dean Tornabine got his first red Dodge Viper and he pulled it out the front of the gym. That's that picture you sometimes see. I'm standing near a Dodge Viper with my pants down, flexing my leg. That was Dean's car. Oh, that was Dean's car. <laughs> I thought that was your car. No, no, I was still, I was still on the two thousand a month from Weeder. I couldn't afford the dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a little, I think I had a little Pontiac Fiero, little Pontiac Fiero back then, and I was living in Westwood with my friend Kurt. And on the way home from the gym, it overheated, blew up, so I left it on the side of the road. And <laughs> 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 yeah, it did. I just left it there. It Dude, That's those great. were the days. Every day in that gym. I remember I brought um this big Jeep. Remember like O'Hearn had that really big Jeep? Yeah. I brought one like that. I didn't like the color, so I went down the alleyway just behind Gold's there. Like, you know, where the car park is, this alleyway. It was this green, so I brought tins of black spray paint, and I'm just spraying this thing black in the alleyway, and Ed drives past. He's like, Lee? I said, yeah, just doing a paint job. And then <laughs> I was coming back to the gym, and there was cars in the driveway, and there was a park there, so I went up on the sidewalk, over the curb, into the thing, and Ed walks out and just goes. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the front or the back where the gate was. You're talking yeah. about the front or the back where the gate was. You know, I painted, I painted it out the, the back. back. Oh, oh, like the, the gold back. is here, but across the road from gold <laughs> there's that little alleyway. I painted it there. Once it was painted, I come back. And people are in the driveway, blocking the driveway. So I'm up on the side, walk over the grass, and went in. Ed walks out and just goes. He's like your father. Like, you get caught by your father yeah, doing yeah, so wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at, the, at that parking lot in Gold's Gym, there were, like, four parking spots in the front. Yeah. That, that yeah. Was it. And, you, and now you got to go across the street or down the yeah. block or wherever. Mm. Flex Wheeler used to pull into the, the parking lot. Uh -huh. And he'd sit there and wait. Yeah. Hour, he an hour, half or an hour, you know, until yeah. until one of the spot would would open up. You know, <laughs> a couple of times you parked in the handicap spot because that was the only one that was open. <laughs> Next week, <laughs> can you move your car, please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he'd wait. Oh. Charles Glass would be inside training with Chris and Rico. He'll be outside. Or you hear the subwoofer, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> for an hour. He'd sit and wait just there. I said, "Why don't you park over there?" He's like, "No." It's like you park his Mercedes up. What are you doing in the car? Just that's where. Music? That's just where. Sit in the car. Just sit and wait an hour. <laughs> that's where the I came back. Jeep Swenson had just thrown Tom Platts a beating right there. Well, there was there was a huge era of of musical cars back in one period in the nineties there because everybody do the same thing they pull in they abandon their car in the front and then they, mm -hmm. they wait till they got the announcement from the desk. All right, you know, great. Um, 
Gary, Gary Stridham, can you come move your car now? There's a parking lot. It was parking spot open. Oh, oh, Stridham, yeah. Stridham lived one block from the gym. Yeah. Literally hey. one block from the gym. I used to, the I drive drive Gary. And he Gary's used to like, drive his BMW, 12 cylinder yeah. BMW 850, yeah. one block to the gym. And then yeah, 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 leave it in the front because there was no parking yeah. spots. He could have yeah. walked from home. He could have walked from that. Yeah, I, I, I used to park down, down the street. I think it was even funnier, John. I'd be, it, it, it messaged me or say, oh, Gary, we'll meet for breakfast at the firehouse. I'm, I'm okay. I'll be sitting, waiting, waiting. All of a sudden, I see him coming down, does a U turn, parks in front of the firehouse. Like, oh, what took so long? He goes, Oh, the parking garage this and the gate. I said, "Why don't you walk across?" He lived in that building across from the fire. He would drive and then park in front of the firehouse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but the time he took his elevator to the car and got the car, well, he wanted to show off. He wanted to show off the car. That's why he yeah, I mean, Everybody did. Yeah. Well, I'd park down the street and I'd walk. I remember Titus got the same BMW, the eight cylinder, but. His was an eight forty, wasn't eight fifty, because he he probably didn't have as much money as. as, as but, but he chiseled the fucking net number plate off the back. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. right, right. And right. then everyone would be in the front parking lot. The trunk would be open, and all you'd see was a subwoofer, speakers this oh, big. I no. think Flex spent like back then. I think Flex spent like almost twenty grand on the stereo wow. system back then. And this thing, if you're in the gym, you can just hear it vibrating out the right, front of the right, gym. Right. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know what was worse, though? Nobody talks about this. You know what was worse? World's Gym parking. The original World's Gym was a fucking, underneath. you know, underneath the fucking thing there. How yeah. many cars you fit there? Four? I used, to love it. I used to love it when Joe Gold made that beautiful thing for Arnold's parking spot. It was like yeah, with the red star. marble, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger's name in gold. Oh. Because you normally get there six thirty seven, so some people would park there beforehand. If you did, you'd park his Hummer right behind you. I remember this one time, this woman wanted this woman wanted to leave, and she's like, "Oh, I don't know, could you move?" He's like, "No, you're in my spot." He just kept training for another hour and she had to wait till he was finished. But sometimes in the morning, Eddie would get there early, or somebody else would get there early and leave flowers there because it looked like a fucking tomb monument. He'd pull up again. <laughs> oh, very funny, guys. <laughs> it looks like, it, like, it, it looked like that. Didn't he just died. die? Didn't he you just know, die, know. Eddie Giuliani? Yeah, yeah well, you're he died years just, ago. Yeah, just before, because he was meant to come to my induction at the Venice Beach. Right. He died just a couple of months before that, yeah. He's uh, a good, he was hey, a guys. great guy. Oh, yeah, Sorry, funny. but I got to go. We're, we're wrapping up anyway. Guys, thanks for uh, sharing all the training stories, all the Gold's Gym stories, the Barbarian Brothers stories. And, uh, Did we stay in the green? Did we stay in the green on the show? We'll find what? out when I upload this if we stay green for the Dave Palumbo podcast. I renamed the show. That's so right. Can, That's right. The, the Dave Palumbo podcast. Try to fool YouTube a little bit. We'll see if it works. <laughs> right, guys. We're out of time. We'll see you next week. If I don't see you guys, have a happy new year. Happy new year.